In this video, I like to talk to, about uh, mistakes you can make investing in real estate, uh, single family real estate in particular, um, four units or less, single family homes, townhomes, condos, villas. Here in uh, South Florida, um, I personally like long-term rentals. Um, when I when I talk to investors, I hear uh, Airbnb and VRBO, short-term rentals. Uh, people are interested in that. Um, it seems to be a hype right now. This is the new uh, sexy thing that can give you a lot of return. Um, I personally feel there are a lot of pitfalls that you can step into when you look at uh, short-term rentals or when you think about short-term rentals. For me personally, this is not the way to go. I do not like short-term rentals. There are too many variables in the equation um, that can go wrong, that could cost you money in the long run. So here are some of the pitfalls that I think why short-term rentals are not the way to invest into real estate. All right. If you're interested in an investment or if you're thinking of moving to Southeast Florida, uh, please give me a call, shoot me a text or send me an email. My contact details are below. I'm uh, happy to help you. I'm happy to talk to you, answer any questions that you may have. And if you're new to the channel uh, and would like to see more videos like that, would like to get notified when I upload a new video with more information about real estate in Southeast Florida, please subscribe and uh, ring the bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. All right. Um, why do I think short-term rentals is not the way to go uh, for real estate investment? It's um, the variables within the system. There are so many things that could go wrong from my perspective compared to a long-term rental. In a long-term rental, you put one tenant there, hopefully he pays rent um, for the for the lease that was signed. If it's a 12 month lease, he pays rent for the, for the 12 months. Every first of the month, you can forget about it. You just make make sure you stay on top of the maintenance and uh, uh, keep your tenant happy and he keeps you happy paying rent on time, hopefully. Uh, Short-term rentals, you have to find a new tenant basically every two weeks or every three weeks in the high season. Uh, maybe you find somebody that is renting from you for two months or three months. Uh, that would be great. On top of that, whenever you have a tenant turnover, the place has to be clean. You have to make sure all the inventory is still there. You have to um, make sure everything is 100%. There is no scratches on the wall, no broken things. Um, everything is clean. These people renting short-term rentals, they can be very picky. And I heard from people it is uh, a headache for them that they call the landlord because of every little thing. In a short-term rental, if a light bulb is broken, your guest or your tenant, they will call you. They will call you over uh, on a Sunday, 10 o'clock at night, asking you to fix that light bulb in the bedroom or change the batteries in the TV remote, something like that. While in a long-term rental, in your lease, it specifies um, what amount of maintenance or what amount of uh, broken things the tenant takes care of. In my leases, it's usually in between $100 and $150. That's what the tenant is responsible for. So if they have a broken switch or if they have a broken light bulb, they fix it themselves and they're not going to call me for that on a, on a Sunday at 9 p.m. when I rather spend time with my family. So um, on top of that, I believe in the future, um, a lot of cities and a lot of neighborhoods, they will regulate uh, short-term rentals that you maybe need to get a license for it or that you, yeah, getting a license for it and that you need to apply with the city uh, for a short-term rental license. Though they basically can limit how many landlords are renting to uh, short-term tenants 
in that city or in this municipality or in that neighborhood. Uh, that's an extra cost for you. Then the city can decide to completely stop giving out licenses, right? Uh, they can decide that short-term rentals is not for them anymore. And that's it. You, you're done with your, with your short-term with your short-term rental business. Um, another thing is, um, if the economy goes into a recession or if another 2020 comes around where people stop traveling, what are you going to do with your, with your short-term rental? If, if people are not allowed to travel anymore or if people don't have the money to travel anymore, um, you're basically going to pay out every month the cost that you have associated with your insurance, taxes, mortgage payments, electricity, water, and uh, people are not traveling anymore and that's it. You, you, you don't uh, have an income anymore, right? So while if you have a long-term tenant, they're bound by the lease, hopefully they're not losing their job, they can still make their uh, monthly lease payments, um, but people always need a place to live. So for me personally, um, I rather have a long-term lease in place that cash flows every month. Um, I make my calculations before I buy something. I make sure that all my costs are covered and there is a certain percentage of cash flow. I usually like it between eight and 10%, something like that. Um, and that's what I calculate with. I calculate all the renovations I need to make and uh, I calculate in that the place is uh, vacant for a month before I find a tenant. And uh, that's basically it. And then once a tenant is in there, hopefully they pay rent for their annual lease and hopefully they extend their lease for another year and another year and another year and uh, they keep paying rent and uh, I keep collecting a check. Well, when you have a short-term rental, it's you can collect more money, you can, you can make more cash flow, that's, there's no question about it. But for me, it is also a much riskier business to have short-term tenants. That's why I like to have long-term tenants and that's what I stick with. All right. If you're interested in uh, moving to Southeast Florida or looking for an investment in Southeast Florida, please send me a text, shoot me an email or give me a call. My contact details are below. Thanks for watching.